Well, hopefully Mercedes doesn't feel too frightened by our gorgeous, gorgeous creature over here. Look at the sheen on the snake. And it's actually massive. I don't think I've ever seen one this big. Hold on a sec. I'm going to get a bit... I'm, I'm, no, I'm hesitant. I wanted to say I would get a bit closer, but I'm scared that's actually going to send it off the road. And at least we have a chance to see it. it looks like it's one of the burrowing snakes. You've got to be careful with those. Because burrowing snakes... There is a special type of burrowing snake called a burrowing asp or a stiletto snake and they look harmless because most of these blind or relatively blind snakes are completely completely harmless but the stiletto snake has sideways sideways facing fangs and a very horribly cytotoxic venom oh this is so cool we can go and look at its tracks in a minute and talk about it just look at the watch the way it moves it's got an absolutely massive turning circle it doesn't um it hasn't got that serpentine motion of things like cobras or pythons or mumbas it's got this i'll show you the track in a second and i'll show you what i mean by that when this disappears that is really truly absolutely beautiful i'm not a hundred percent sure as to species there's a couple of different possibilities and i'm gonna try and shuffle us a little bit closer now that it's off on the side quickly before it vanishes okay let's go closer as quickly sensor and then we'll... because it's gonna vanish don't disappear i want to get a closer look at you oh it's falling back down into the road <laughs> Megan's got the, the species down on Pat. She says it's a giant moving sausage. Yes. That's a pretty accurate description, Megan. It is beautiful, though. What a beautiful giant moving sausage. And what a weird sentence that was to say. To give you an idea as to thickness, it is... Hmm... trying to think of a, a sort of a universal description it's about it's probably about 70 centimeters long and about just thicker than a broom handle there it goes fascinating to watch its movements not I think controlled by sight well, certain snakes obviously have exceptional vision that allows them to strike and to catch their prey but not all of them do and this this to me is a is an underground snake the shininess of the scales and the shape of the head there are no big eyes there this is this this is a type of snake that is nocturnal and that lives underground cool huh Rebecca, you want to know, does it have an eye, does it have eyes, a mouth, and a nose? It does. Absolutely it does. It does have eyes. It is definitely not eyeless. They're very, very small and underdeveloped. And its sense of smell is exceptional. So its sense of smell, it's got a nose, and snakes do have external nost nostrils. They also have, which mammals have to an extent as well, even we have a residual one, is something known as an organ of Jacobson. And so when you see a snake flickering its tongue out, it's basically tasting the world around it. And it takes the particles in the air that convey that scent and it transfers them to an organ at the top of its mouth that is a way of tasting the smell or interpreting the smell in a way that we as human beings, I don't think, can begin to comprehend what signals that that sends to us. The reason that a, a snake's tongue is forked because it just adds that extra dimension of creating this exceptional, exceptional, exceptional ability to almost see a scent trail. They're basically seeing with their nose and by forking their tongue it gives them a way of determining direction. The scent particles are stronger on the right than they are on the left, or stronger on the left than they are on the right. 
and that constant flickering is the way in which they interpret their world. And I would actually, we always talk about what we'd like to be if we could be an animal for a day. I don't think I'd choose snake if that was the only, if that was an option. But it would be fascinating to be inside their minds because I don't think we can comprehend. We are such sight-driven creatures or orally driven creatures. In, in other words, all the auditory signals and the visual signals that we get is how we interpret our world. Our sense of smell is so basic. It's connected to our memories and so on, but really we don't begin to comprehend what it must be like to be an animal and smell something. That's really cool. I want to show you the track quickly and then we'll go into looking at pictures of snakes now that we've lost our actual snake, but I just want to show you this track. Okay, let me not drive over it. It's quite difficult to do in reverse, I have to tell you. I'm guessing, 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 guessing. Oh, I think I guessed right, okay. There we go, that's what I wanted. There we go. Totally different to ooh, your normal snake track. And let me just hop off so I can show you what I mean by that. A typical snake track, like a cobra or a mamba or something like that, has got a very clearly defined, and I'm not sure how clearly this is going to show because it's such flat light this morning, but a, a sort of a typical snake track kind of does this. This doesn't. This is all over the place. It is a completely, completely unserpentine like mo motion. And now that you've seen the way that it moves, you can kind of understand. It's, when I said that it, it's got a wide turning circle, I, I basically meant that it, it, yeah, it sort of does this. It creates a much, much larger track than a snake of a similar size would that moves in a different way. I've seen this track in this place every day for the last two weeks and I haven't known which snake it is. So now we do. And that's the fun thing is that you learn something every single day. So now I want to just have a look because there's lots of different color varieties of snakes out here which makes occasionally identifying them. I've got a suspicion that was a stiletto snake. I just want to double check and see if they get that big. Um, Harlequin snakes. No, that is definitely not a harlequin snake. Ah, purple gloss snake was definitely not a purple gloss snake, nor was it a centipede eater. Stilettos. You see, totally different colouring to the ones that we saw. If we have a look at this picture over here. But, very similar shape and a very, very similar shiny body. Specimens of 70, 700 millimeters are known. Okay, that, that would be about right. That would be a very big one. Hmm. Interesting. Unfortunately, the best way to ID it would have been to grab it. But, as I said, there is no safe way to catch a stiletto snake without a snake stick because they are the typical way of catching a snake by grabbing behind its head. Apart from scaring the poor snake, uh, is impossible to do with a stiletto snake because their fangs stick out at the side. It wasn't a risk I really wanted to take. It would be a very, very big stiletto snake, but it's possible. There's just something about it that immediately said to me, stiletto. Okay, let's just have a quick look again. Oh. Sorry, Alice. I've been so distracted by figuring out snakes, I forgot to plug you back in. So if you've been talking to me, I have absolutely no idea what you've been saying to me. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Alice. Now, Natural, you want to know why is it so shiny? Um, it's one of those things about blind snakes and burrowing snakes that they tend to be, they are nocturnal and they tend to spend quite a lot of time underneath the surface of the soil. 
and that has meant that they don't need the same rough scales that our typical snakes do. So our sort of our things like our cobras, our mumbers, puff adders, they all have much scalier, their, their scales are much rougher than that of the nocturnal snakes, purple gloss, beaked, blinded, all of those, not blinded, blind snakes. I just want to check the size of blind snakes. That's the other possibility. I have only ever found very, very tiny blind snakes. I have never seen a massive one, no. Hey, these are too, these are far too, no, that's not possible. No. Hey, there's something called a flower pot snake. Isn't that lovely? Definitely not a worm snake. Those things are minute. Sorry, since I'm not making your life easy. I should actually put this on the dashboard, but I'm just checking things. Our winter prism, while we look at pictures of snakes and Jamie double checks herself, I'm still, I'm relatively convinced that was a funny coloured stiletto. You want to know, when we are drinking fine wines and eating fine foods and obviously things like, um, things like strong cheeses, are we using our organ of Jacobson? To be honest, ours is relatively dis no longer functional. So all of those nerve pathways, okay, I'm going to pop this away. We've been through the ones it could be. Our, our nerve centers are all sort of, they have basically reduced tremendously to get, make way for other aspects of our brain to enlarge and other nerves. So we're not really utilizing it. We have a, a residual one, but it doesn't really function. Definitely not in the same way that it does in other animals that are completely dictated to by their sense of smell. Speaking of which, I'm going to go and see if our lovely smelly hyenas are around while I do that. Let's go over to James. <laughs> 